This conference will now be recorded. Very good. I'll call the uh, meeting to order. And it is uh, 6.02. And welcome, everyone, to the City of West Covina Community and Senior Services Commission, our regular meeting of Tuesday, September the 8th, 2020. Uh, we'll start out with, as I got my screen adjusted here. Uh, we'll call to order, like I say, a Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to lead for the reason that uh, right outside of my window here, I've got a flag that's been flying since two days after 9-11. And it's been flying high and with the light on it every night. So I'd like to use that. I'll lead the pledge and uh, please stand up and uh, have about 20 seconds of silent prayer afterwards. Thank you. Everybody ready? I pledge of Allegiance. The flag the United States of America. States of America. To the Republic for which, for which it stands. One, One nation, under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Moment of silent prayer, please. Very good, thank you. Can we have roll call, please? Commissioner Blackburn. Present. Commissioner Din. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Molnar. Present. Present. Hey, hey, Deb, real quick, I cannot hear you very well at all for whatever reason. So I don't know if it's a microphone issue, but if you could speak up, I appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I could hear Nick well there, but I've had a, had a hard time hearing the uh, names. Okay, let me do it again. Uh, Commissioner better. Blackburn. Present. Commissioner Din. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Molnar. Commissioner Velez. Commissioner Williams, Commissioner Zaklama, present. Vice Chair Lewis, here. Chair Stewart, present. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll move on to uh, oral com communications. Do we have any uh, uh, emails in to be read? There are no open comments. No open comments at all? Okay. None. All right. We'll uh, go on to the uh, consent calendar, which uh, currently has nothing on it. Is there anything last minute that uh, we could talk about on consent calendar or just pass through it? Uh, it's uh, approval of minutes is the next item. Yeah, right. Okay. Consent calendar. Okay. Yeah. Nothing on consent. Next thing we have is the approval of the minutes of the March 10th meeting. <coughs> And I know it goes way back there. Uh, do we have any uh, questions on it? Or I'm sure everybody's read it from the from the uh, emails here. But uh, do we have any questions on it before we uh, take a vote on it? No questions from Paul. All right. Anyone else have one? I, di I did have one myself. I know there's one item on there about uh, Commissioner Kaufman in the uh, Arbor Day uh, tree situation. Did that ever come about? I'm not sure when Arbor Day was exactly, but uh, did anything happen on that or is it still up in the air? Commissioner Stewart, this is Mike Kreft up. We, uh, yeah, Mike. We, made a formal, we made a formal request to West Covina Beautiful. They, okay. they put that event on, but we have not been told whether that's been selected or not. So we're still waiting to hear back from West Covina Beautiful. Okay, so it stands right where it was at that day then. Okay, that's fine. 
All righty. Is there any other questions? If not, uh, do I hear approval for the uh, March 10th minutes? So moved. All so second. second. Let's have a uh, roll call, please. Vice Chair Stewart. Yes. Vice, I'm sorry, Vice Chair Lewis. Aye. Commissioner Blackburn. Aye. Commissioner Den. Commissioner Mason. Commissioner Mulner. Commissioner Velez. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Zaklama. Aye. All right, that uh, is fine for the approval of the minutes. <clears throat> Let's move on to the uh, new business and uh, item number two, which is COVID-19 impacts to city services. Mr. Chair. Uh, we do, um, we, we, we do I, have a long I, list of things on there that they've uh, pointed out that are closed and everything. Mike, do you want to make comment on that? Chair Stewart. Um, Dave, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, I I didn't hear uh, at least two commissioners vote on the on the last uh, matter. On the uh, minutes? Yeah, I I didn't hear either uh, Commissioner Zaklama or Commissioner Mason uh, cast a vote. Yeah, I, I did hear Zaklama. I didn't I didn't hear Gail Mason. No. Okay. I I, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I just wanted to make sure that we have a okay. clean record. Okay, yeah. Are you there? Can you hear Gail? You're okay? It's Gail? Gail Mason? I guess she's not on the, on the line. Hear, right no, now. can you hear Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can, yeah. yeah. Did, yes. you, did you vote on okay. the uh, March 10th yeah, uh, minutes? Yeah, I don't think you heard me. I voted yes, but I couldn't okay, find that green fine. button. Okay. It's only a question. We need, need your vote for to make it legal. That was all. Okay. Okay. We we'll go ahead. We'll go on to the uh, number two and new business. Mike, you ended up. You did have a good list of things here. What uh, what's going on? You want to comment on that? Yeah, no problem at all. Um, to start out, you know, city hall, our hours and everything hasn't been been impacted. The community to service the community services department has been step, stepping up a lot in maintenance. You know, we've gone through a lot of changes and um, lost a lot of manpower. And so we've kind of become a hybrid department where we're handling maintenance and and everything else. So in this COVID, in this time of COVID, you know, community services, we haven't been able to do the programs we want to do. The main thing that community services has been doing is the meals program. Um, at the high point, we were delivering about 500 meals a day. And now we're down to about 245. So um, that means that the key that's been our key emphasis in the department hours at the facilities um all of our centers are changed we have not opened up our daycares city hall is closed to the public doing some minor business with permits and things of that nature um police station is closed not sure exactly when we're going to open back up you know um we'll just have to go as as the, you know as we continue to go through the pandemic we're all looking forward to getting back to whatever the new normal is um, but that's where we're at. Other than the senior mills, we have the LA Regional Food Bank dist distribution that's happening at the library. And uh, from a recreation side, the, we've just started to rent out our fields again. So some outdoor activities that follow social guidelines will, will start to continue. So you'll see, see people out at parks doing different things and using our fields. Um, it is touchy because some people feel that nobody should be doing anything and other people feel that they should but uh, we are following LA County guidelines and parks and things will start to open. So you'll see at, at organized activities at the parks again. Um, other than that, I don't know if you have any questions, something you want me to hit on or something more specific or uh, anything I didn't touch on. All right. Any questions for Mike? <clears throat> yeah, Mike, just, just curious. Um, are there any uh, known active cases of COVID uh, amongst city staff that would prevent uh, a reopening? That that is that is publicly disclosable, I guess, at this juncture. Well, obviously, there's not much. To, you know, obviously, we can't go into details of who, but um, we did have we did have an outbreak at the city, and we currently do not have. You know, we are no longer considered an outbreak or a cluster. 
I'm not completely familiar with the rules, but um, we did have some areas where there were some cases of COVID and because of that, we're being very cautious. You know, um, the city unfortunately has to go on the side. We're so, you know, we are so limited on our resources now and the staff has become so thin that we, we have to be cautious because the second you come in contact, we could be shutting down whole departments. Um, but the, I believe there's one active case in the city. I couldn't even tell you which department, but there's one active case, I believe. And, and there were points that we had more than that. Does, right, I does that answer your question? Say, yes, it does. I, I was just curious if, if that, that was um, a, a basis for making a decision as to whether or not to reopen or not. It was, it was a major part. It was, a, it was a major, you know, it was a major part of the decision making. And then just knowing to keep operations going, we have to protect ourselves as much as we can. Right. Do, do, do we have any, uh, any particular policy or, or baseline or guideline that uh, is going to, is, is going to be the basis for a decision to reopen or not reopen? Uh, I mean, basically, we're going off count. I mean, we, we defer to, you know, we don't have our own Department of Health, so we, we defer to the county. We're just following county guidelines and with, the, with the, the cases we've had. It's my understanding that HR has been in contact with the county, working with them regularly and following the process. And at your highest point, when, you, you know, when we were at our highest point, I believe the county was out at our facilities monitoring us as well. So um, to answer your question, I believe we're just going to follow whatever the county tells us to do. Do we know when the those, those will be our guidelines. Do we know when the county is going to give us any guidelines as to whether or not we're going to reopen or is I I I guess I, I guess what I want to know is do, do department heads even know uh, what the what the guidelines are going to be uh, as to whether or not the city hall reopen? Well, to be honest, with you, we find out about 5 minutes before the public does. Um, I, I am in the, I am in, in the department head meetings and, uh, you know, the, the information does, we do not get information from the county much faster than you do. And a lot, there's lots of times that it's out on the news and social media before we've even, we've even heard it. So to answer your question, there's, there, it, we have no idea when things will completely open and we are not finding it much faster than anybody else. Okay. I. I, I guess I'm a little disappointed that you know, as a as as a city that a lot of people rely on um, services for, that we don't have any sort of plan in place for how we're going to <clears throat> ensure that people who don't have the ability to um, uh, to to do things virtually or otherwise are are still going to uh, obtain essential services, and I, I think that's the thing I'm most concerned about. Well, Nick, I'm not sure what services you're referring to, because obviously from our standpoint, you know, most of our co customer service, you know, we're not in person, but we're responding to every call and every, you know, it could be, you know, through the app or calls and things like that. So we're, start, we're still trying to get where we need to go and do the things we need to do. Um, building department is also working on, the building department's also working on um, taking payments, putting plans through. So even though the, even though City Hall is closed, I do not believe that we are not providing the, the services. So I guess uh, if there's a specific service that you feel is not getting done, maybe I can go down that route. But at this time, I believe that everybody's still being accommodated. It's just maybe not in person. Now, all, all I wanted to know is, is whether or not there, there are any concerns that come with, with closing, closing down city hall and, you know, conceivably, um, you know, access for people to um, either um, either redress any grievances that they have with the city or 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 whatever. Um, I just want to see that be something that uh, is is always uh, top of mind for City Hall. And obviously, I know there are limitations, but I I think the concern I have is that it doesn't seem like there's a, a a, a good understanding of of what the baseline is for you know when we get back to uh, you know having having sort of face to face discussions with people and and maybe uh, maybe it is premature I don't know but 
um, obviously the government is as essential as it gets. And, um, you know, the fact that we don't have any sort of set baseline as to as to what is going to be um, a a timeline for for that to happen is the only thing that concerns me. I, it's not that we're not being proactive in a timeline. It's just that we're at the mercy of the county. We don't know what they're going to do or where they're going to go. You know, the state says one thing, the county says another. Um, but the plan is to give plenty of time to do that. We want to make sure we communicate more effectively when we do open and, and clear about how we do that and what guidelines we are going to follow, whether it be social distancing or just things to protect uh, staff and the patrons that come into the facility. So um, we are working on that. HR is working on it. They're looking at doing it and they want to make sure they roll it out in a timely manner and, and a way for everybody to see what the guidelines are going to be. Um, it's just not, we just don't know exactly when that's going to be because we're relying on the county to make that decision. Mike, it's Gail. Yes, ma'am. Can we get a waiver or something to, to reopen, you know, like they're doing in other parts of Southern California for schools and everything? I mean, do we have to absolutely stay right with the, with the county or the state? Can, can we make a decision on our own? Of opening? I believe that I believe that there are certain decisions that can be made. I do believe that, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it would come to council to give that direction. You know, council would be have to want to give that direction. And from my dealings, council has been on, you know, they've been on the spectrum of we're, you know, the we're going to stay side. apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're staying on the county side. Right. Okay. Just, just that was the question I had. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Any and, other and the topic from, oh, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, the look, the, the, okay, the, dealing with this, the, the, yeah, the topic is all over the place. It's all over the map. You know, when it comes to our rec, our rec stuff, half the population wants to play sports. The other half feels that they shouldn't. But, you know, I've got, I've got 15 to 20 calls a day from people saying, hey, I saw these people at the parks. I saw people doing this. They weren't following the rules. Um, it's been a very hard thing to, to gauge and judge. And at this point, there's not a waiver or something like that. The, the city's standpoint has been to follow the county guidelines. Right. Okay. A couple fast questions for you, Mike. On the, uh, yeah. the 20 plus uh, food boxes out of the uh, senior citizen, I know it's for uh, 60 plus. Are they for residents, the West Covina residents only? Currently, we are only providing for West Covina residents. And my okay. understanding is even if, now, now to be clear, not it, you don't necessarily have to be a West Covina resident because we get county funding for that. The right. county the county pays for a large portion of that program, so yeah. you do not do that. Yeah. But we were fortunate enough to get most of our West Covina residents taken care of, and at the high point, I believe ninety almost ninety six percent was uh, was was West Covina residents. Right. Basically, the ID is ID uh, showing is to see if they're sixty years old. Right. That's the idea. Over That's 60. correct. Yeah. Okay. The second thing is, and I never taped attention, like uh, Cameron Park, where all the swings and everything are wide open. Do you have those taped off, or are people using them? We have taped them. That we've had, we have them taped off, but they people keep taking down the tape. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. I went by the other day. Are, I didn't see hardly any tape, and I couldn't. I figured that's what happened. You know. Yeah. 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 We've been, we put signs up. We put signs up. Playgrounds closed. We taped everything off. Those lasted about five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially on the weekends. That group that goes in there, they'll take them off every time probably. So that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, Mike, thank you. Anything else for Mike uh, on that subject there? Yeah, I have a question, Mike. This is uh, this is Kareem or Zach, Dr. Zach. Um, on the boxes that are being distributed for Senior Center, I, I know you guys are super stretched in and everybody's working hard. Do you need any support on that? That seems like a pretty essential service people rely on. Do you need any support, well, any word out? What can we do to support you on those? At, at this point, at this point, we're where we need to be. There was a time that we were overrun and we were ha having difficulties, but we've streamlined the program. Numbers have started to go down because the next issue is going to be funding. You know, at this point, manpower is fine. Funding is going to become more of an issue. As this continues to go on, you know, this is a program that is costly. And, um, you know, the, we don't know how 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 much the cares how far the cares acts are going to go. 
you know, we, we're, we're told more funding is going to come, but we aren't sure how much more funding. Um, so an issue now is not so much manpower. It's, it's, it's the actual how we're going to continue to pay for this if this continues to go on. Okay. Well, thanks, Mike. That's really relevant information. I appreciate everything everybody in the city is doing. Thank you guys for doing all that. And the other thing is just, uh, you know, the senior center is a place that we were hit with COVID and it was very difficult. So because of the essential nature of that program, we are trying to keep it very limited to who has access and who doesn't. Um, it, we ended up having to shift gears and uh, there was a couple weeks that I was delivering meals and doing 500 meals a day, getting to 500 different locations in the city's tough. So, um, Not easy. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> because of that, we are keeping the center, you know, we're keeping people in and out of there. And there has been outreach of people wanting to help, willing to help. But the more people, we, more hands we put in there, the more chance we have putting our staff at risk for COVID, which did happen. So, you know, we're just, they, they're kind of on an island sometimes. I very rarely go by. We talk, you know, we talk via phone, computer, things like that. But um, we are limiting who we give access. Mike, All right, Mike. It's, go ahead. It's Gail. Do you ahead, do Gail. you need any do you need any help from us, Mike, at the senior center? No, no, Gail. That's, I mean, at this point, we we would reach out. First of all, there's okay. been numerous commissions. We know you're always willing to help, but we are trying to keep keep those people isolated. Yeah. Fit, you know, and, and 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 avoiding COVID. So we are good yeah. right now. We have a pretty good system going. Okay, sounds good. Very good. <clears throat> Any other questions on that subject? All right, well, here and then we'll go on to number three, which is the facility usage reports for the months of August uh, 2019 through January 2020. Uh, I looked them over pretty good. Anybody have any comments on them? Besides the fact there's a lot of work on there? <laughs> there was a lot, yeah. <laughs> any comments on them? I got only one. On the uh, what is it on code, code enforcement? The number number of incidents on the code. I I am surprising that I think it's pretty low because according to uh, uh, our uh, city manager, why they still got those seven people out looking for you know for infractions and like less forty or less a month is not very much. So I just, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that also. And then also, Dave, I'm out in the public. I'm out with the public yeah. and I've had quite a few people come up to me um, talking about how much interaction they're getting from code enforcement. And as you, as you can imagine, there's some people that really don't like it. Yeah. Um, so Deb, let's, 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 uh, let's look at that and make sure what we're getting is accurate. So I don't know if we have to reach out to Mylan. I'm assuming this yeah. is just what was on the app, but I'm wondering if they're recording it some other way. Could be because well, I'm, my question is how many people are out there looking for those problems? I mean, one, I could do that myself in one month and get 40 houses that really need help, you know. Doesn't need to be seven guys out there, but anyway. Yeah, those are just kind of what's been reported in the application, not what they've actually been out there doing. And they really didn't start enforcement until um, end of January, beginning of February. So those won't reflect until those um, facility use reports are, are given to you guys next meeting. So they just report uh, that number in there is what uh, the ones that have been completed? That, what are just, they? just what they've reported to the um, application, not the calls oh. they've gotten or any of that. That's just what's been reported in the application. Yeah. So in other words, they might go out and uh, say something and not even write it up, just have to take care of it. That's what talk about, something like that. Um, they didn't really start using the system till the end of January, beginning of February of the new okay. system. So they were okay. doing it by hand prior to that. All right. Well, anyway, I hope it works out because we got a lot of a lot of problems in the city. So I hope they're out there doing their job. Okay, very good. Anything else on that stuff from anybody? On code enforcement? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I I don't know. I I. Just question exactly how or ex exactly what's going on on that front. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, not exactly sure what's going on. I'd like to have more data on that front just to see what is what exactly is going on and um, you know what the uh, uh, what the outcomes are and whether or not things are actually getting corrected. 
um, and how quickly the process is going from a a, a site or or uh, or shutdown of a project to uh, to restarting a project or something like that uh, that is uh, uh, subject to permitting. I think that that would be an interesting thing to see. Perhaps it's outside of the scope well, of this commission. It's interesting. I have now, just to bring bring something up. Code enforcement really has nothing. Uh, well, I should say nothing, but very little to do with the permit. Code enforcement is where there's a violation with a car uh, in a driveway. It's got to be. Uh, uh, I think it's 20 feet from the street, 25 feet from the street. But I don't think code enforcement has anything to do with permits, does it, Mike? Uh, no, it does. If there's, there's different. I, I don't know the ins and outs, but it is, you know, you, you brought up an example, but they do have some and building permits. Um, you know, uh, also property permits. You know, overgrown things like that. The two intertwine. So there are permits that they don't, they don't provide the permits, but they, I believe they cite for not having certain permits or following certain procedure. So. If I can recommend, maybe once again, you know, this isn't our purview per se, but I don't think it would be bad for us to have Mylan, who is the, the code enforcement manager, come out and tell us what he's doing, clarify on these calls, and then clear up the information. I mean, it's stuff we are reporting out to you. That being said, you know, not to jump the gun, we're going to talk about Travis committee a little bit later as well. That is not this committee's purview. So yeah, right. I can't get him here to tell, so to, to clarify, so you know what he is what he is doing, have it come, you know, how they handle things, what they actually do. We can have him make a report, but, um, you know, if the committee, so if the, if the commission so, so wishes, I can make that happen if you guys would like. Well, you know, maybe, maybe the uh, next meeting we have, the uh, numbers may speak for themselves too, if they could, you know, might be a lot more. So we'd be probably be happy with that. But anyway, if he wanted to come in and, uh, and talk to us, that would be fine too. I probably answered all the questions that we probably all have. That'd be good. Okay, we will do that. We'll get that agendized. Okay, very good. Anything else anybody has on the facility? We kind of got stuck in the code enforcement, but there's a lot, a lot of numbers on there. That just had to be the one I picked out. But uh, anything else that we can talk about? Okay, here enough with none. We'll go down to uh, continued business. And now it's number four, which is city parks and playground replacement needs. And that's uh, you again, Mike. <clears throat> Well, to give a report, the ad hoc committee, uh, they've chosen a design and we are working on using our measuring funds to, to build a new playground or to replace the existing playground up at Shadow Oak Park. Um, I think they came out with a great design. I think that selection has been done. That should be going out to bid here shortly. So as discussed with the, the measuring money, our goal is to replace the park every year. And by doing that, we will also have money to maintain those parks. Um, so we need to decide we need to decide where we want to go to next with covid we don't know what the community outreach is going to be we don't know if they're going to if they're going to modify the guidelines for community outreach but um i think the commission needs to come up with a location and and then start starts the work to get the process done so we can get the project approved so i don't know if we want to just i don't know if we want to take a tour go look at playgrounds i don't know if um you want us to provide a couple sites and then we vote from there and then we start the community outreach. But uh, this is something that we are looking to get going. In addition, we also got some extra money from Prop 68, which is a great, it's a, uh, that's a, um, th those are, those are grant funds that are available, but there was a uh, application project for that, but they're actually now going to provide us more money to that. So there is some possibility that we'll be able to do two playgrounds this year and not one. Uh, oh, good. A couple locations. They didn't give us as much money for that. Like the money doesn't cover, for example, like the playground at Shadow Oak, but something like California Parkhead is something that it may cover. So, um, yeah, I need to. We're just looking for direction from the commission on how we would like to how we'd like to decide on the next site. Sites or well, sites. It'd be, it'd be, pretty, be pretty tough to have a you know a public meeting right now. So that's pretty much out of the question for at least in a little while. You know. Sometimes you get good out input out of a meeting, but uh, it's pretty much impossible. One thought I had was if all the commissioners had a list of the parks, the addresses, on our own free time, we could probably take a look at them one by one and maybe bring it back next time and see how it works out. Would it, um, 
if I can make a suggestion, are you okay if I submit to you the that I, like say I say five in the worst shape, you know, five that need the most repair, well, five that we our biggest you know issues. If if we yeah. provide those to the commission and then we go out from there and then and then from there we can work on design, that would be great. Yeah, that'd be you good know, because Mike? you've already done it. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, yeah. I I I would like to go out to those five. I think we we need to go out and see them before we make our decision. I agree. So the so because of COVID, so we'll send that out and commissioners can go on their own, and then we can yeah, we can good. circle back on the next one and and make a motion to where we're going to move next, and then we'll start we'll start the community whatever like I said the community outreach that's the term I'm using because that's what Prop A requires. Mm -hmm. I don't know what those guidelines are going to be. They might say, hey, we can do it all online. We can do it via via online survey. Um, those things could change. So when I say community outreach, it might not be our traditional thinking of community outreach. Correct. Right. Well, by you doing that uh, legwork for us and getting it down to five, that'll be pretty nice just to get five, and we can definitely take care of that. Yeah. That'll be good. Yeah. Now, to be clear, when I say five, I am not going to look at location. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look at what I feel is the most, what puts us the most at risk. Um, yeah. You know, we ha we have we have aging parks, we have aging buildings, a lot of infrastructure. So. You know, I know sometimes it comes down to one area is getting more service than the other and things of that nature. But when we provide the locations, it will not be on that basis. So beyond where we think the most need is to protect our, our community. Good. Right. I agree on, agree on that for sure. Mike, I have a question. This is Zach. Um, just a reminder, a brief reminder on the funds. Do they roll over if we don't spend them? Um, are yearly allotted or are we? do they roll over or they're gone? We do not lose these funds. I mean, the the prop the prop 68 money could be lost, but our Measure A funds, no, they we keep them and they keep rolling over. You can even do if we wanted to do a bigger project, we could take five years worth. We could take five years worth and do that. That being said, I know that we want a lot of. I know we want a lot of bigger things, but bigger things cost more to maintain, and us having the money to maintain the playgrounds is very you know it comes you know it is money for that, but. If we wanted to do a pool, you know, if we wanted to do a pool, we could take 1.5 million and build a pool. But the upkeep on a pool is more than our M&S funds would be, so we still have to find a way to pay for that after it's done. So, does that make sense, Doctor Zach? Yeah, that def that definitely makes sense. Thank you for the reminder. Um, so, I I agree with what you're saying and what what the other commissioners are saying that if we get uh, probably a comprehensive, just so you could Mike cover all your bases, if you put out a comprehensive list of all the parks with addresses and whatever commissioner wants to go look they can go look or, or anybody in the public wants to go look they can look and make the recommendation during public speaking time but i definitely think the biggest value is you mike personally um having dealt with these parks day in day out and the problems of these parks i think the biggest value goes to your recommendations if you minimize your recommendations to the bare essentials maybe we could allocate some funds there and if we do use these opportunity times where everything is closed as as times to save funds to build something later on when we do open again um, it might not be you know a, a bad thing to do as long as we cover the essentials that you recommend Mike understood understood and like I said uh, I want everybody to, I want everybody to have a say in that and I, I like I said I, I, I will definitely steer you what I think is safe but you know where and when and what we do that's you know you're the residents and we want we work for you so we want to provide the community stuff so i understand that and i i will i definitely will be there to interject and help where i can and i think there there is a little bit of meetings you know I, I don't think we can have a meeting and say hey for example make it an option where the community comes back and says they want a pool we got we got to watch the pie in the sky you know we can't build a community center for three hundred thousand dollars so exactly. you know those are things that we just have to do right well, anyway, that'll get us a good start on our next project when you give us those five, you know, five parks. That'll be good. So we'll go from there. Thank you. Dave, can I say something? Sure, go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> Betty, your camera's on. I don't think she realizes her camera's on. Okay. Well... She'll find out. I don't. I don't know if she can hear us. Hmm. 
Yeah, in my office, okay. I don't. She's in. She, she's in my office. I'm actually off today. She's in my office. I don't think I, I have a camera, oh. but I don't think I have a microphone. Maybe she's gonna get help now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. She did not. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Any more discussion on the uh, city parks? If not, we'll go down to number five, which is a discussion on the request for an update of the traffic committee meetings. Yeah, well, I don't, I think we provided, Deb, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, but Deb, did we provide the last traffic committee report here? Yes, you did. Okay, so here's the issue. This, this is not our purview. You know, this commission, yes, we are public services. And to be honest with you, this isn't even run out of our department. This is run out of engineering. And then after the after recommendation has been approved, gone to council, it comes to us and, and we implement it. But we are not the traffic committee. We very rarely make any recommendations. We, we just carry them out after the fact and repair what's broken. Um, I do understand Commissioner Lewis's, you know, I understand Commissioner Lewis's concern and 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 see how the two like two put two two together and said this could be part of our purview, but this is just a community service, you know, community and senior services commission, which is just half of what our department consists of now. So we don't want to go down the route where we have a traffic committee, but then we have somebody a, a separate committee overriding going against the traffic committee. Obviously, everybody is welcome to. Everybody's welcome to go to the traffic committee, put input in on the traffic committee, and, and, and be part of that as part of their meeting. And if you'd like, we can get those meetings out. You know, we can get those calendared out to you. Deb can send something out to let everybody know they, they know what, you know, let everyone know when those meetings are. But we don't want to get in a position where we're trying to overrule, undermine, well, undermine is not the right word, but um, interject, interject with the traffic committee when, you know, when it's not our purview. So... Nick, do you understand on that? I know this was a you, uh, you know one of your requests. Yeah, I mean, respectfully, I I, I disagree with staff's assessment on this. I, I think it certainly is within our purview, and I think um, I, I I think the problem is is that it's just something that no one really takes seriously. And if you believe it's taken seriously, then uh, um, I invite. All of the busy people who uh, who work to provide uh, for their families to attend the uh, the meeting of the traffic committee um, on on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. That that alone should tell you how seriously um, this is taken. And unfortunately, um, the fact is it's not taken seriously, and um, we do not have a we do not have a city where where uh, on an issue that people see every day um, is is actually something that that they can get any kind of ability to redress grievances other than oh hey I'm going to talk to a city council member and you know say that uh, if you don't put in this traffic or if you don't put in this stop sign or you don't put in this street light I ain't voting for you in the next. Uh, the next election cycle. I, I don't think that that's appropriate. I, I, I've seen that happen far too often in this city. I've been involved in this city on, on this commission for over 10 years now, and I just don't think it's appropriate. And so I I, I, I will say I I have no problem with undermining the credibility of a, of a committee that has no one to answer to other than the city council who but frankly, has other things to concern themselves with, and I, I don't know. Again, I, I'm I'm happy to uh, happy to undermine their legitimacy to the extent that it needs to be undermined, because again, uh, it certainly is within the purview of this commission, and I I, I just I reject the notion that uh, that staff is going to tell me otherwise. As much as I love staff, and uh, and and I very much do. I, I just don't think that uh, I don't think it's appropriate here. But you know, nonetheless, if uh, if if that's what the commission thinks, if the commission thinks that uh, the status quo is perfect and the lack of accountability on these issues is 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 where we want to leave it, uh, that's fine. 
I will certainly bring it up with uh, with my council member, and we'll go from there. So Nick, Nick do you feel? Uh, I just, I want to ask a question. Do you feel if the meeting was at a different time and more accessible, do you think that would make a difference? I feel there's two problems. One, the commission is made up of nothing but city employees who have, quite frankly, no direct connection necessarily to the city itself after they leave at five o'clock or six o'clock, whatever it is. Um, and and I and I also think that uh, you know, three o'clock. I mean, that's you know. You're you're saying by virtue of the time that you have it that you're not looking for public input. I mean, three o'clock. I think I, I think everyone on this commission who is not retired is certainly well in the midst of their workday when this is ongoing. Um, and and I, I I think that there may be a few people who could attend if they if they have the time at three p.m. But I, I think by and large that's that's not the case. Now, do I think that you're always going to have that problem? Sure. I think if somebody is is working a uh, a, a graveyard shift and they start at six p.m., it's going to be very difficult for them to ever come to a city council meeting or 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 make any kind of uh, attempt to to speak to any public body but i think that the vast majority of us are are going to be unable to address a uh, a public body at 3 p.m on a tuesday I, I i just think that's a recipe for disaster uh, or or a recipe for no accountability understood hey nick this is zach oh yes dr zach all right zach Nick, thanks for uh, bringing it to the attention, bringing it to the surface. Um, what are your What are your suggestions? So I I think I'm hearing two, which is maybe the the time of the meeting is not the best, and I'm also hearing that the members of the committee um, should be a little bit more strategic to the relevance of who it actually impacts. Um, but but what is, what's your actual suggestions? Do you have suggestions, or you just want to bring it to the surface? Well, I I, I think my suggestion would be. Um, much like every other uh, committee uh, in, in the city, this is the only one that's made up entirely of staff. Um, and you know, if if that's if 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 that's what accountability looks like to the people, I mean, I guess that's fine. It's not what accountability looks like to me. So, you know, my proposal, um, if 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 I were um, if I were some some super legislator who had the ability to to, to change things with the, uh, the flick of a pen, I, I would say that it should be something that's addressed at a at a reasonable hour. Um, perhaps a six o'clock meeting would would make sense. And I I think that it should be something that the individuals who are appointed to that uh, entity should should certainly have a seat at the table in the sense that they're making recommendations. But I think. I, I think in terms of policy, that should that should always be something that is that that is formulated either by city council or um, or their their designated ad advisory committees, so that you do have the ability to uh, to actively consider things that actual residents of the city um, want to want to bring up, and I, I think that that's a that's an important thing. I mean, you know, for th this this commission, um, it, it's 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 effectively arguing this commission could be made up entirely of city employees, uh, because why not? I mean, ultimately, they 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 all know what's going on in the city, but you know, they're not they're not us necessarily, um, and I don't really think that that's what the city council is it, it is intending by it. I think it's just something that that was that was uh enshrined in in the municipal code back in the 60s and and no one has ever changed it because hey it it seems seems like it's worked but it's mainly worked because no one knows about it no one cares about it and and, and i think that that's a 
that's a big problem. You know, no no oversight means no accountability, and and I, I think that that's a that's a serious issue. Nick, um, first and foremost, I want to say that I understand what you're saying, and I the points you bring the the points you bring. I understand the points you're bringing up. I guess from here, I don't know what we do as a commission, because I just don't want a commission to oversee a commission. You know, like we don't want people to come back on what we choose for playgrounds and things of that nature. I don't say come back, but at some point, you know, there's too many cooks in the kitchen. So I guess I'm just not sure. And Deb, have we? I don't know if we've had anything like this before, but I mean, obviously we can make a recommendation to council, say that we feel there should be, uh, you know, more public input and, and public members of that committee. I think that's a recommendation that could be taken to them. So I don't know if we make a motion or, you know, I'm not sure what we're looking to do there, but I still think that committee, like your, to your point, I, I understand. I think they're very valid points. I just don't know how, I don't know how our commission handles that one. Does that make sense? No, Dave, I, have you ever seen anything like this? I'm not here, but I do know that the traffic committee um, stuff that's decided there eventually goes to the planning commission. The items they discuss okay. there, it goes to the to the planning commission because it, it has to do with planning as well. Deborah? I believe all the you know, uh, they they came to kind of prob uh, when we were going to change um, uh, Sunset Boulevard South. They had something to do with it for a while when they wanted to reconfigure it, but then I think it did go to the Planning Commission completely, didn't it? I want to uh, say yes yeah, because plan. it's a uh, traffic okay. engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, you you were on planning before. I was just curious. Have have you seen it come up to planning before? Have you seen traffic committee recommendations come up to planning? Uh, actually, the uh, as I, I'm just trying to think. I don't think I recall one time it ever come up to the planning. To tell you the truth, <laughs> but that doesn't mean it doesn't though. It just means there wasn't probably anything coming up. That was all, you know. But uh, uh, I, Dave, I understand. yeah. This is Paul. Uh, again, when I was yeah, on Paul. planning, I don't ever recall that coming up traffic. No, no, I, I can see it coming up, you know, but like you say, it gets up to bigger, the, the bigger uh, engineers and things like that when they start making big changes like that. But uh, I don't recall anything like that at all in my time in the commission. I really don't. I'm sorry, but I, I thought that I had heard it had gone because there was a lot of problems with sunset and how they wanted to change it. And I yeah. would assume the traffic com committee would have at least uh, been part of it. Yeah. Well, it's very possible. You're right, Gail. Just it didn't happen to come up when I was there. That was all. Yeah. You know. Okay. Just just wondering. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I if I can make a suggestion, can we table this and then bring back the process? I want to bring back who's on the commission because I believe there's public input as well. I actually think all of the, I'm not positive on this, but I believe all, um, I believe all of the, all the recommendations are complaints or suggestions that come from the public. So maybe if we can table this and then we can bring back the information and, and make it clear what the process actually is and where the recommendations go after they're submitted to traffic committee, if they go to planning, if they go to council. Because I think in this case, the process and who's on the committee would, would be big details we need to have. And I apologize, but I don't know those off the top of my head. Great idea, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can tell you who's on the committee. Um, it's the city traffic engineer. Um, and now that we're a contract city, I, I guess that's whoever we contracted out to be. The chief of police or in his discretion, um, as his representative, the chief of the traffic division um and the uh the city engineer oh well they're not i mean are you considering them strictly staff well now they're contract positions they are yeah con yeah trans tech handles most of that okay okay well you but know mike if gonna, mike if you're going to bring it back maybe you can get an idea if there were appointed people on there, who's going to appoint them and, and uh, what would be the requirements? You know, that might be a pretty good idea that way, you know? 
we will, I, will, I will bring back clarity on exactly how the commission works, where, where, how recommendations come in, how they're handled, and where they go. I, I, I apologize. Uh, I, I, I didn't understand. I mean, I didn't understand exactly what we wanted to do here. So, Nick, you've been clear from the very beginning, and, and like I said, it didn't register with me first. And now, I understand what you're saying. Um, I, I will get clarity on those things and bring it back, and uh, then, then from there, maybe we make a motion to take something to Cal, you know, make a recommendation to council to make some changes. I appreciate it. That would, that would be good. That would be very good. Any more discussion on the uh, traffic committee? All right. Well, hearing none, we'll go ahead and go to the uh, ad hoc committee reports. Anybody have any ad hoc reports? I do have one. We had a ad hoc committee meeting with the uh, CPG funds and uh, we put a program into uh play did that work out okay mike that's what we did yes we did we have the, the, the you know the money's been allocated kelly's doing a great job handling that and you know as always you guys do an excellent job helping pick with that so yeah we, everything's in motion the action plan has been put in place and we are moving forward just, and we went just, we went 50 50 on the uh payouts right that's correct yeah and uh, is there is there a timeline for the uh, second payment um I, off the top of my head i do not know that no okay. i'm not i'm not okay. sure i think it's i think it's before december i think it's before the end of december but i'm not 100 percent positive on that all right that's good i'm glad it went forward because i think it was a pretty good plan okay thank you yeah uh, mike, anybody mike, else go ahead uh, i'm sorry. sorry sorry dave mike just just curious um in in terms of the the plan and i i i think our sort of two two tiered approach was 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 actually um, hopefully quite helpful, but I, I do want to see uh, whether or not uh, that's that's worked out well in in practice here, and you know what kind of feedback we're getting from the uh, the, the uh, individual uh, um, entities that that we've provided funding to. Okay, we we will we will get that information. Okay. I will say, talking to Kelly and dealing with this with COVID. Things have been all over the map and communication, some of the stuff that we normally do. You know, I know Kelly last week was hand delivering things because communication has been a little bit tough, but we, we will get that information and get that back to the commission. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Well, just, just curious, has there, has there been any, uh, um, has, has there been any feedback that, that you know of as of, as of yet on this or no? Uh, none that I know of. I mean, I, I know that they're all thankful. I know that, you know, they're grateful for any help that we can give, but as far as how things are working and the 50, 50, no, that we haven't heard anything back on that yet. Okay. All right. I, I, I just want to see whether or not, um, you know, they're, they're being inundated or, or, or not, um, just given the, the, uh, the complications of the times. So, um, and, and obviously not having any information on that. I'll, I'll certainly look forward to that at the, at, at the next meeting, if we can have that, that'd be great. Well, we're we're gonna ask. I mean, after this, we're gonna pose the question. We'll we'll, we'll have okay. an, like we'll ask that the question and have the answer for you. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Mike. Any other questions on the ad hoc committees? All right, hearing none. How about uh, commissioner reports? Dave. Yes. Well, few and far between, I'm telling you. Uh, absolutely nothing from me, but you know, the, the city is looking kind of sad lately. Uh, it seems like I see a little more graffiti, uh, garbage. I, it's it's not looking too good. And I know we're we're low on on you know the employees that can do this, but it, it's kind of discouraging. Gail, I don't know if you were aware or not, but we were given direction to cut contracts. Um, so no, we I had to we had to cut we cut our parks contract, and uh, we went from seven day a week trash pickup to uh -huh. uh, to Mondays and Fridays. Now, okay, that was, taken, that was taken to council. That was taken to council two weeks ago. Council rejected that. And they are putting okay. they they put the contract back in place. So as of September first, as of last week, we're back to picking okay. up trash seven days a week. Oh good. So, oh good. It was just not looking too well. You should see improvement there. 
Um, I have, we have one staff member on graffiti. He works, you know, he works his 40 hours a week. And then we also, we, uh-huh. you know, because of limited resources, we have him work on Saturdays and, and Sundays as well when he's available and do that. So we are trying to stay on top of it, but there is a lot going on. I don't know if people have more free time or what the case is, but we have noticed an uptick in graffiti as well. And uh, we'll continue to work hard at that. Okay. Thanks, Mike. I just had to bring it up. No problem. That's good. Thanks. Thank you, Gail. Anything else okay. from the commissioners? All right. This is Hello. Uh, hello. hello. Go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, compliment staff. Uh, I just cannot believe how good of a job they're doing. It's that shorthanded, and it's not just uh, – uh, I think it's throughout the city. And uh, just a compliment to uh, those, Mike and his uh, group. Uh, tough job, uh, doing a good job, and certainly appreciate it. Uh, just want to say thank you. Yep. I certainly second that. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And I agree. Absolutely agree. Yes. Yeah, thank I like to all. echo that. I, I wanted to mention, this is Zach, I wanted to mention, uh, you know, I hope the city staff and the small business owners and the workers in the city are really taking care of their mental health as well because not just the physical tasks that are in front of you because we're all short is trying but also we've hit a point of decision fatigue where it gets really tiring that there's so many changing variables every single day and there's so many different perspectives and and everybody's emotions is across the spectrum from one side to the other so Mike, I hope you and your team and everybody, uh, everybody out there, all the small business owners and all everybody doing their part in the city, is really taking time for themselves and and, and getting some peace. Well, I, you know, we obviously are worried about our staff and doing everything we can to protect them, make them feel comfortable, and do those things. And uh, I'm very fortunate; I have a hard-working group that works for me, and they want to work. You know, uh, there it, it is challenging, and there there are lots of variables and limited resources but at the end of the day the people that work for me want to work and i'm very thankful for that and um so we're gonna do it we, we don't get everywhere but we're trying to and that's what we'll continue to do we'll continue to be versatile and try to do as much as we possibly can best you can do that's great anything else uh for staff there all right do we have anything that wants to be agendized for our next meeting Mr. Commissioner Stewart, can I say something, please? Sure, go ahead. I just want to tell you all that it's great to be talking to you again. Um, I don't know if I'm a dinosaur or what, but I, I like old school. I like face-to-face. Uh, you know, computers and these meetings, it's not its not my favorite. We're chomping at the bit to get back to community services. My, You know, m- most of my experience, obviously we do maintenance now, but most of my experience is community services, and this, is, this has been very hard for us. It's been hard for us not to see the people that we service every day not to provide the outlets for people to play sports and, and do the fun things that they do to recreate and do those things. And uh, you guys are a big part of what we do. And we miss you. You know, we miss you guys as much as you missed us. And I'm sorry it took us a long time to get to a meeting together, but uh, definitely glad to be back. Look forward to building these playgrounds and getting back to getting the community services department up and running again here in the city. So yeah. absolutely. thank you all and uh, glad we're back. Yeah. There, there was one thing I, I, I did want to bring up, uh, uh, Commissioner Stewart, if, if I can, as far as items to be agendized. Um, All right, go I, right ahead. I, I, I understand that uh, um, we, we were all talking about um, updating playgrounds um, at, at the uh, meetings that, that occurred uh, prior to the outbreak of COVID. And I, 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 I want us to potentially uh, potentially look at, at, at the next uh, meeting at, at maybe reconsidering that given the current state of the world and whether or not it makes sense to have, uh, have a lot of money go into playgrounds. Obviously, I'm hoping that the future is a covid free future and hopefully there's a vaccine and therapeutics and everything in place but if uh if if there is a a directive for you know the next year or many years uh for uh social distancing i i do question the um at least in the short term the efficacy of spending money on 
playgrounds that no one is going to be able to use. And and so I, I would just like us to to consider whether or not that's something that we want to consider or con continue to pursue as our policy um, with the with the park funds that we have available um, just just given the, the state of the world and whether or not there are alternatives out there um, you know I don't know if we want to look at a, a playground that is based on some sort of social distancing uh, policy but perhaps that's something that, that we do that we do need to consider uh, given the state of affairs in the world and, and you know if, if we're honest about this the the powers that be in the state of California are not going to let this go easily. Um, and they're going to, um, as, as long as it is politically expedient, uh, pursue policies that, um, that are, are, are very conservative on the issue of COVID. Um, and if that is the case, um, you're probably not going to see playgrounds open any time in the near term necessarily. So that's the only reason why I would I would like to see that discussed. Um, you know, maybe in six months that discussion would be completely moot. Um, and and I suspect it will based upon the 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 political expedience behind some of the policies that are in place. But who knows? Maybe it is something that we that we should consider um, consider ad, advising the council to to see, seek an alternative policy at least in the in the short term. Although it, it may not necessarily uh, be something that that we need to do in in the long term. And and I don't know what that would necessarily look like, but it's it's a thought that I'd, I'd like to consider. Right. Well, only time is going to tell you what the answer to your question is there. <laughs> Right. Any, anyone uh, Nick, else? I think, those, I think uh, Nick, I think those are all valid points, but I just want to be clear. We're not talking about scrapping the playground we've already picked and voted on because that, that ship has sailed. We are, we are right. taking that out to bid. Right. No, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking about the, the current playground or anything like that, that that's, that's already in, in play. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, future projects and, um, you know, Obviously, um, it, it, it was it was strongly suggested that we pursue this, and I I, I think that's fine. I, I think there's certainly some merit to doing so, but given the uh, the, the the state of affairs, and the world, I don't know that that things are necessarily going to go back to to normal per se anytime soon. And so again, I just want to make sure that. The, the money that's not already allocated for projects um, may, may be something we want to consider spending on something else. I don't know. May, maybe maybe I'm the only one that feels like that, um, but I just like to discuss it. That's all. I think I think it's a great idea. But I also think we should challenge the builders. What are these playground companies going to do to stay in business? Maybe this isn't the last pandemic in our life. Maybe we have to prepare. And, right. and put it on them. I think those are valid points. I think they're great points. Anyone else have a comment there? <laughs> I, uh, I have a, another agenda item I'd like to suggest. I'm not sure if we're still discussing this, but whenever you're free, I'm, I have another agenda. All right, go ahead. All right, go ahead. So this, I, I'd like to know the, what are the total amount of senior living homes um, that are in West Virginia, and what are the channels or modes of communication between them and uh, the city, and and what are the county or city resources available to them? Um, you know. The, the biggest outbreaks have been in, in group living homes. And in our, in our commission, you know, the seniors are very important. So I just want to know how many of them are in West Covina? What are the channels of communication between them and us when they're in trouble, when they have a case, 
when they need to communicate, when they need help? And then what are the county and, and city resources available to them? Um, I know some other high profile cities got in trouble because because they, they brought some COVID back home into their group living homes. And I just I just want to make sure in West Covina, you know, we, we have it thought out. So can we put that on the agenda that we just find out how many there are, what the modes of communication are for them, and uh, what the county and city resources are for them? You want to put the uh, thing on the agenda to uh, what for the uh, elderly homes? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, el elderly living homes in West Covina. Uh -huh. How many? How many are there? Okay. What are mm -hmm. what are the channels of communication between them and city that are that is available? All right. And what are the county and city resources available, generally speaking, right. for them? Is that possible, Mike? To do that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Zach. We'll have a we'll have Susan Perez at the next meeting, and she can give you know. I feel that's an area. I mean, that's an area that we prioritize. I can't tell you that we reach out to every senior in the community. But um, we definitely keep track of where people are, who, who they are. Part of our meals delivery program is a wellness check. We have social workers that they have access to and outlets. But I'll definitely have Susie come in, explain what we do, how we reach out, how we try to protect ourselves, and uh, explain that further. Thank you. That's, one, Thank that's you, wonderful, Thank you, Mike. Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? <clears throat> Uh, before we close up, I'd like to thank uh, Deborah for all the work she's uh, done getting this together. And uh, the next thing on the uh, agenda there is the uh, places to go and see. And uh, she's done a lot of work to get that together. And it's really uh, it's really nice. All the events are on there for the rest of the month or so or more. So anyway, if we um, don't have anything else on the agenda, why uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. I just say all in favor. Just yell aye. 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 All right. Aye. Aye. Thanks again, everybody. And uh, until next time, why uh, stay safe. And uh, thanks, Mike, for all your help. And uh, Deborah, we'll, we'll see you in a while. Take it easy, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you soon. Have a good night, everyone. Everybody be safe out there. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Mm. Bye. 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 Thanks, Deb. Welcome. Tomorrow. Okay.